Hello everybody, welcome to another audio commentary done by Luminous. This is gonna be solo kicking it off by myself. Uh, sorry that Nebula is not here, but he just commentated a game with me and it sucked. So I'm and he's going to sleep now, so I'm gonna do it by myself. The, the game we actually commented just now was VP versus MYM, and I know a lot of fanboys out there went like, oh, you should have hosted that, you should have uploaded it. Um, but to be honest, it was a very, very bad game. And uh, we actually, or I personally actually looked through all the replays in Gosu Gamer uh, between MYM and VP to commentate. Uh, but really, um, point for AB was a lot more, uh, a lot more boring than I thought it would be. Um, it was like playing Arena. Uh, it was 50 minutes of waiting, you know, like you wait for a game to start and then you actually play for five minutes because everyone leaves. Um, for point four AB was like that. Uh, you you wait for, you know, you have eight heroes roaming the map for 40 minutes and then you had one team battle. And then in that team battle, er either everyone die or everyone blinked out. Because like, the blink dagger, like, it made it intensive but only for five seconds. And, uh, I'm so glad that I'm doing a point f or 6.64 replay now. So hopefully this will be a good game. It's actually a very, very recommended game from a couple of my viewers. So I'm actually going to do it. Um, a lot of people has been recommending BFB, but they are so in by raging right now. Um, they, they just pwned NYM and all the other top teams like nothing. And I personally has a thing against uh, one-sided games because <clears throat> one-sided games, generally, you can't really learn that much from it. And it, it's just a one-sided rape. It's not really fun to commentate, um, you know, things like that. So looking at the bands here, this is uh, DTS versus uh, MYM. Melk is back on the uh, driving seat now, so I'm expecting good lineups, good strategy from MYM. Um, even though um, they're kind of uh, Melk is kind of rusty. I think Hani is back as well, but Hani's not really playing in this game. So a uh, really uh, strong lineup: Melk, Pusher, Mania, Miguel, and Angel. Uh, very, very tough, solid lineup. Um, they have <laughs> look at DTS banning uh, Visage. Visage, uh, Melk's been playing Visage a lot these days, so I'm I'm pretty sure that was a very uh, counterbank uh, towards Melk. And uh, it, all these gangs are not uh, not very it's very standard it seems. Um, the Earthshaker ban this might not be that standard, but given that Earthshaker is a very very tough hero, uh, good at stopping pushes, good at initiating things like that. So. Um, looks like a first pick panda. Ooh, uh, bad ban. Not banning panda is quite uh, quite a bad thing for Melk. I'm not sure why he left that in the pool. Maybe he think DTS won't pick it. But he he's one of those the first pick heroes. So I think Melk dropped the ball there a bit. I'm not sure what his strategy is. Um, but given that uh, everyone's been recommending this game through PMs and whatnot, so. Um, I'm looking towards to a very interesting game, and the reason why I was doing a VP versus MYM um, is I was actually preparing for my hundredth video. This is the hundredth video, as you have uh, noticed from the uh, title uh, on YouTube. Looks like Necrolife first pick, not the best first pick. Uh, Rasa again, not the for be very best first pick. I think Venge, Line, things like that are better, but um, I think Milk is trying to do some strategy. Um, but anyways, back to what I was saying before, this is my 100th video, uh, so um, I wanted to do something very, very special for you guys. So that's why I look back to the point for AB era, trying to pick a very good VP versus MYM game. But it turned out that um, we only it was only good because we all thought it was good. And when I really sat down and looked at it, 6.64 um, games are a lot better than them. So I hope uh, you guys are satisfied with the replays. Uh, MYM versus DTS instead of MYM versus VP. No Vigos in this game, I'm sorry. But there is still Pusher and Milk. So there's that. Um, instead of doing instead of doing uh, uh, a Dota game, I was also planning to do a, a StarCraft commentary. Uh, but I couldn't really find a good StarCraft game. The, the reason why I, I want to do a StarCraft game is that I actually started doing Dota commentary by <laughs> watching StarCraft commentaries. Um, pro on the pro uh, StarCraft scene, uh, I was watching thing, uh, guys like Cholera, Diggity, and, and Klazar, and guys like that, and I just realized, wait, there are no Dota commentators. Why don't I just be one? Even though I'm not nearly as a good of a commentator compared to them, and not nearly as of a good of a speaker, 
I felt that I actually know something about this game, so why don't I commentate uh, something about Dota? So that's how it all happened. And I think uh, this Sandra video is, um, I want to do a StarCraft one kind of to just like a silent thank you for them uh, just paving the way for me. I still look to them as a, for a lot of inspiration and, and things like that. But uh, since this is not a StarCraft hammer commentary, let me get back to the game. Looks like Mel is going definitely for push strat. Furion definitely gave that away. Uh, Enigma provides very, very good team fight capabilities, but uh, his uh, his summons just push really, really well. So um, the last couple of picks for uh, DTS, they went more ganking instead of counter pushing, which I guess if you want to. If you keep ganking these heroes, they could never push. Uh, that that makes a very valid counter. But um, and of course, Kunga cleaves the shit out of all the illusions and whatnot. So that's a good, fairly good counter pick in terms of counter uh, pushing. But I think DTS strategy is really looking to just um, gank the heck out of MOM and never um, make them allow them to push. But all four of these heroes so far just could push so well. And I'm looking for another a very very good. Um, final pick in terms of um, another strong pushing hero that maybe provides a lot of armor or whatnot to the heroes uh, to the summons and illusion because there's a lot of summons um, they'd actually need a pipe maybe because they, they have a lot of, um, sentinel has a lot of aoe as well so i'm looking for milk uh, i don't know what what uh, their last last push is and if you notice they have a pretty good solo as well enigma could uh, jungle Furion could jungle. So if they pick another good solo, uh, this will work out. You have two jungling and then three solo. A lot of EXP there. Could, could uh, EXP up real fast into quick pushes. Um, so I don't know what Melk is doing. Pick, pick, hurry up. Only 10, 9, 8. I'm almost ex expecting it. A, I don't know, a Dusa maybe? Dusa's not even picked in any of these. Ooh, a Chen. Okay. So we're gonna see Melk's Chen. Melk is a, a very very good Chen player. Um, yeah, this is gonna be Melk's Chen. Um, so this is gonna be crazy ass pushing. Furion gives like five uh, trends, treants, uh Miguel wards, pusher, freaking um, summons, and this guy collects more summons and mania just like lay down creep ways. So this is gonna be a very very quick push. I'm expecting this game to be end in like. 40 minutes to be honest so hopefully this will be a very quick game uh, on the other side of course I was uh, mentioning uh, this is going to be a very very uh, gank oriented style panda is going to be a trouble though because panda is going to ultimate and he's he's actually a very very uh, good at stopping pushes he'll ultimate run his fire panda in and that's going to be trouble uh, these guys don't have enough uh, disables to kind of deal with it so um, actually yeah, they are getting a lot of solo lanes um, Necrolite is going to solo top, uh, Rasa is solo mid, and I don't know who's going to solo bottom, maybe Enigma, but Push is not really the solo player you want, maybe Angel's, uh, yeah, Angel's probably going to solo, and then they're going to get uh, two junglers, and uh, this this bottom lane is actually very, mm, very uh, dangerous, because they could actually come out and gank very, very effectively, meanwhile on the Sentinel side, Art, art style, Rexar is going to solo mid, uh, BM solo, very, very nice, um, Probably you're going to see CM and Panda top, or Vengeance Panda top, and then uh, Kunga and CM bottom. So Sentinel has very, very tough lanes. I don't think, I'm not sure if these solo heroes could handle their assignment um, properly. And you can see that the Sentinel is warding up. I'm surprised that Sentinel did not ward up uh, this area, uh, but of course they're, they're not going to ward. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, they're going to pump it up. Oh wow, you usually see Axes doing things like this, <laughs> where they just... Uh, uh, kind of just stop the lane, and they could just do it with the summons and stuff. It looks like uh, CM and and Kunga trying to desperately get to your creeps, barely made it. But looks like they're gonna come around and then kind of gank. Oh my god, CM! <laughs> they're gonna try to push this tower, pushing a level one. Meanwhile, Chen doing his thing at uh, collecting uh, creeps and stuff. And middle lane Rasa should have the advantage since this is range, and he could harass very easily. Uh, but uh, Hawk who kept uh, get the rune horse in, so this is gonna be an interesting to, lane to watch. Meanwhile, top lane, um, I think Necrolite is mostly on the defensive because one one mistake he's gonna get stunned, he's gonna get clapped, and he might even go down. 
but Necrolite's uh, kind of uh, beefy in terms that he could heal himself. So I don't, I don't. Uh, this is gonna be a very defensive lane, trying to get a lot of denies in, trying to get a lot of, uh, trying to get some last hits in. Uh, trying to limit the farm of the panda, but other than that, I don't think he's going to be doing that much. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, this guy, these guys are still pushing. Keep in mind, they also have the Ring of Basilius turned on. <laughs> so these guys are, 